Hello and welcome to MM Design. My name is Maria and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to recreate runway looks, how to take inspiration from it and just start wearing runway looks. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. In case of you're wondering what trends are happening at the moment, I do have a bunch of videos on that. They're listed down in the description box below, or you can finish this video and there will be a little link for those. But today we're, we're exploring our closets, we're trying to get the best wear out of it, and all of these looks I have created from using what I already have. This means that you don't always need to buy something new in order to stay trendy, to stay stylish, but you can actually rewear your clothes, go thrifting, you name it. So today I'm going to be recreating three different shows, Burberry, Christian Dior, and Luxmara. Before each show, I tend to go and read a little bit about it. There is like sometimes a few little hints of what was inspiring to the designer, why they created their collection this way, why did they show it in a particular manner. It's pretty cool. This way you kind of understand more about it, a little idea of how they think fashion is evolving today. So let's read a little bit about the Burberry show. It's the most free collection I have done at Burberry. Tissy expressed it through reference of the clothes historically worn in nature, most specifically around the turn of the last century. Throughout history, the costume of people going to the forest had been very child designed, a naive outline made much more sensual, he said, explaining his approach to the idea. The ease and adaptability represented by those garments in an age where you couldn't have applied those words to many wardrobes, inspired dresses constructed as if it from squares sewn together and transformative takes on tailoring which could be de- and reconstructed by wear using closing techniques. There was an arts and crafty character of the collection, backed up by manipulated flag and astronomy motifs and the lashing of eco faux fur that drove home Tatissi's nature-centric message. His post-pandemic mindset discovered a kindred spirit in the naturalist movement of the 19th and 20th centuries, which informed the collection. It was a time when instinct and whim were put above rationalism and materialism, when arts felt the call of the wild and sought to deprogram themselves from the rules of society. It's very sexy, I think, but without being vulgar, Femininity is something I really wanted to achieve at Burberry when I arrived because it's a very masculine company. Tissy said, referring to the trench-tastic root of the house, as with progressive young generations to which this video played tribute. Authenticity is key for Burberry. It's found in men's wary character uh, that is its female clients probably expect to see it's the sensual and almost athletic glitz in which he excels. The collection showed that the two can coexist on the same runway. He said, I felt like I'm starting to see my vocabulary at Burberry. Okay, that was a long one. <laughs> and now you guys can see why I don't write my own script because I'm a very harsh reader. Anyways, I can definitely see the simpleness, like the geometric figures that he was faux fur also. Yes, it was present quite a bit. Let's take a look at the first outfit that I tried to create from this video and let's just separate it out into blocks. We have a red suit, right? bottoms top. We have a turtleneck. It has some colors. So it's like black on top. It has a red and um, like a nudish color in there too. And we have kind of like a sock boot in the nude color. So here we are. We have four things that we need. Red pants, red blazer, a turtleneck of those colors, and a boot in like a nude maybe, like a lighter color. Here we are. Very simple. I have a black turtleneck. Don't really have a turtleneck with like stripes. You could easily substitute it with like a nude one or maybe a red one too. And we have a red blazer, red pants, and nude heels. I'm having a pan leather heel moment here. 
I like this look. Very minimalistic, very color blocky, which kind of fits with the whole aesthetic of the show. There weren't many patterns. There was mostly color blocks, very like very simple. I like it. Very great office look. Even like go to a dinner like this or to a party. Like I feel like this look can do anything. So I quite like it. I usually wear this with like a red pump as well, but I quite like the look of the nude shoe. It's a little bit different for me. I would have never paired it like this. I feel like a broken record. I always say, I would never pair this together, but it looks really cool. So that's why I encourage everybody to try and copy the looks from the runways because you're not going to have an exact copy. You're going to have your own variation of that just because of the limitations of your closet. And this way you are kind of bound by the mold, but then you're trying something new that you wouldn't have tried otherwise because of that mold, but then still that mold is going to be different for everybody. Anyways, this is a very complicated explanation, so let's just move on to the next look. Oh, and a quick question. Do you guys do you guys think I should do these having like a show for a video, making it much shorter? Or do you like having like a few shows that I talk about in one video? Let me know down in the comments below. This is actually maybe a very critical moment in my channel. The next outfit we have this interesting kind of a headpiece. It's a hat with like strings. I don't know what, what those are. It's, it's an interesting hat. We have very, very tall boots. They're kind of like go under the shorts. We have somewhat of a wider black short made like a little Bermuda moment. And we have a top like an, I wouldn't say that this is a bralette. It's more like short, like a top over oversight that's the same color as the hat and a bag. Okay, so mm, I don't have black Bermuda shorts, but I do have biker shorts. So I have decided to wear those. So we have a weird looking hat, right? I don't have a hat like that. Who does? So I tried to do something, try to make shift something from a sweater, which is very arts and crafty of me, right? Going back to the show notes. I don't like my sweater on my head. I, yeah, just throw that out. I layered a bralette over top of a black turtleneck, having really the tallest boots that I own in black. Not quite the same, but that's all right. And a bag in that similar color as the top. I don't like this outfit at all, but it's okay. It's an experiment. Now I know I don't like this combination. Maybe I would go for like a wider, um, like the, the wider shorts, right? But maybe like a skirt because I don't have a wider short. I'm not sure if I like the over bralette in this scenario. Uh, yeah, I just don't like it. And I don't know how to save this outfit. So let's just move on to the next one. Okay. All right, here we go. Here are more of the square motifs that we talked about. We have this orange shirt. Is it a sweater? Probably like a sweater. And we have a nice V. I wouldn't say it's a V-neck, but it, it does look like a V-neck. So like a pattern of a V. We have black and white on the top. Once again, kind of like a darker shorts, the same, the long boots. We've seen this all already, and here we go. I have this v-neck sweat shirt thing that has kind of the colors that we see there, but it's it's not orange, it's not that bright. I put a bandana underneath just to get get that black and white thing. It's not as visible on here, but it's okay. I tried. The same shorts don't have the Bermuda ones, we just have these biker shorts and a very tall boot. It's okay. I can't say that I'm a biggest fan of this outfit. Maybe uh, I would wear this at home without the boot, <laughs> but nothing like it, it's not an extreme fashion moment for me. How would I fix this? Mm, I would just not wear it. Yes. Okay. Next one. All right. So we have a kind of almost all black moment. Once again, we have those stripes happening in the turtleneck, black coat, turtleneck, black pant with a nude shoe that we've seen already. For my outfit, I I went for the same turtleneck. This time I had a scarf, so it was like, oh, oh I might as well just have that, you know, stripe going, some a little interest in there. Put on my faux leather pants, 
have a black coat that is very pirate inspired. Like I'm honestly, I'm only keeping it to be a pirate one day for Halloween. <laughs> and boots that we've already seen, a nude, good color. I actually like these boots here because I'm not super tall, but I'm pretty tall. So lots of pants are very short on me. And these are an example of really short pants on me. I wish they were like to my ankle, but they're not, but that's okay. Because the boot is nude and there is, you can see um, like a skin break in between, but it's not that visible just because it kind of like continues into my skin tone. The breakup doesn't make me shorter. So sometimes wearing nude shoes or like closer to your color of skin shoes can actually give you a little bit of like a length visually by eliminating more lines of breaking. So the less lines you have going like this, the taller you can appear and having like diagonal lines also helps to break those sharp edges and it just lengthens you up a little bit. Okay, so this is a simple outfit. Yeah, I would wear it, but would I wear it to a special occasion? Probably not. Okay, we see this hat again, you guys. This time I promise it's gonna be a little bit better. <laughs> but we have an all black outfit. We have that hat with the little things, a black uh, skirt, and once again, those nude shoes on the bottom. So here we are. What I did was took my black turtleneck. I know it's a little like see-through, so sorry about that. I have this very like stretchy, it's like a stretch band pencil skirt. And for the hat, I took my binny hat, kind of just tucked in the top portion, you know how it's like, it's like this. So I just tucked it in, kind of like I made a little border here. And I had a random belt from like a pair of trousers and I just like put it underneath the hat and it just like, yeah, does that. Have my patent leather shoes. All right, I don't mind this outfit. I would actually probably go somewhere like this. I think the hat adds a little bit more interest. Like if the hat wasn't there, I think this would have been a very dull outfit. I would need uh, like more accessories, but I think hat actually makes it a little bit more fashion in my opinion. And uh, this completes the Burberry show outfits that I tried to do. So let's move on to the Christian Dior. I only have three looks from that show. It's a, it's very, it was very dark and I didn't really find it super inspiring. Let's just read a few fashion notes from Vogue, shall we? Hopefully they're not gonna be as long. You know, me and my reading skills, not so good. With no reason to dress up, we seen or on some days even look in the mirror. The past year has been an opportunity to reconsider a culture of vanity that was running on overload. Now we talk about a wardrobe rest, a post-lockdown reduction of excess to an experience more essential. Yet the egocentric mentality of a social media era, the so me era, wants what it wants. Confined to our homes, digital narcissism has intensified. We are constantly confronted with our own thumbnail reflections staring back at us. Filmed her Christmas Dior show in Hall of Mirrors in Versailles a gallery created by a self-defying 17th century crown so it could mirror itself in its own greatness. She sees the relationship we have with mirror as an attraction, but at the same time repulsion. There alongside her models, performers engaged in passionate dialogues with the mirrors. It's as if she advised the young girls on the runway. If you want to build your identity, don't look yourself in the mirror. Groomy motifs of vanity and judgment inspired Turi to interpret it for our contemporary situation. She layered the collection with a theme from fairy tales centered around ideas of appearance versus character, Cinderella, Little Red Riding Hood, and Sleeping Beauty. It inspired a collection suspended between the idea of the classic and timeless wardrobe that feels essential now and the alluring danger of the fairy tale world. Roses and apples, the eternal symbol of fairy tales, appeared in prints 
adapted from those created by Dior. Alice in Wonderland's print black white co colored schoolgirl dresses materialized dangerously in leather. A feeling echoed in broderie and glaze that morphed into knitwear or strict laser-cut leather bibs, retaining that looming danger. A thorny ankle strap graced a pair of ruby pumps that nodded to Oz or perhaps Han Christ Christians Andersen's The Red Shoes, a brutal story of desire and vanity. I haven't read that one. Churi paid homage to Ted Fast Tin Soldier in Royal Guard's coats, adding some magic dust to the idea of essential wardrobe. It's curious how many fairy tales have dealt with themes of narcissism and gluttony, which could now be mirrored in the social media age. Perhaps their new warnings of vanity are worth noting. Cheery's collection was thought-provoking illustration of our relationships with beauty, access, and our own image, something to be enjoyed in moderation. I prefer the original fairy tales. The references are scary. It's a way to teach young people that happens in the world, she said. A way to prepare them for the future. Whew. That was much darker than I exper expected. <laughs> All right, you guys. So with this background, a lot more is now, like I can understand way more about the, the show than I thought before. And it's so fascinating to go like inside the mind and see like what inspired them to do this, to to put these all looks together to create something new. I quite like this collection now. <laughs> the first look that I'm trying to recreate is this kind of all plaid look. We have a little colored button-up shirt, a headscarf. I feel like maybe it's a little like corset underneath or maybe it's like overall situation, I'm not sure. So we have that and a plaid coat and red shoes, a black purse, very dark makeup. We we have very smoky eyes, like very like almost borderline gloss makeup. Okay, so how I did it myself, I have a plaid suit, white button up shirt. I put, actually this is an earring of mine. I didn't, didn't have anything but I, I needed some attention here, but that's for sure. So I put an earring through like the button. Instead of a black purse, I decided to go with a red. I don't know. Red shoes, red pump heels. Because I don't have bangs, I just did a, a center part with a scarf, kind of like having the same color story in there. Very like this outfit. Oh my gosh. Yes, wearing this 100% to wear, I have no idea, maybe to work, maybe to a little lunch with late my lady friends. <laughs> I love this outfit. I feel really cool in it. And yes, okay, I wouldn't change a thing about it. Love it, love it a lot. Yes, it's not a coat. I don't have a plaid coat. Substitution, very easy. You can definitely see that I took inspiration from the show, but you can't say that I copied it to the dot. Actually, I have a very deep, I wouldn't say hatred, but whenever I see very rich people just copying looks by purchasing the entire look and wearing it out, it's a flex, maybe like a money flex, but I feel like they are so uninspired and very blank like i just feel like they're cheating and i'm very against that anyways watch me get like super rich and buying looks and wearing them. <laughs> maybe my own bias of not being able to afford the the look but who knows until i get so rich that i buy the entire outfit let's face it we will never know the second look that i'm trying very easy is this the red riding hood that we talked about? I don't know. So we have a hoodie and we have a leopard print skirt in gray. Once again, the makeup is very intense. We have combat boots and yeah, that's part, pretty much 
it. I'm not a fan of this look. I think the blazer is a little bit oversized. Like it's not a sturdy enough, you know, like the blazer on the runway with the material was kind of thicker, I think. And it kind of held its shape a little bit better. A bigger hood. I don't know. So anyways, here I am. I'm wearing combat boots. My skirt isn't quite long enough. This just looks weird. And I kept my scarf underneath. I don't know. I just thought it like it might pop out a little bit here and there. But I'm not a fan of this. Not at all. How would I fix this? Just take off that hideous sweatshirt hoodie and uh, substitute it maybe with like a black blazer or like well, maybe an oversized blazer. Yeah, it would have the same kind of feel but not as chunky and like I just feel like a Michelin man in here. All right, so the look itself, very simple. There is like very, very staple pieces in this look. We have a headscarf sunglasses i don't think i have sunglasses on one anyways a button-up shirt is it a rolled sleeve is it like a it doesn't really matter you can roll your sleeve up we have kind of like a little uh, accent here it's like a red stone we have a gray trouser with what i feel like are loafer shoes very simple like i totally have these items in my closet so here is what i did I have the same scarf, the same shirt, the same flower here, and my gray thrifted trousers that I had to kind of take in because I, I shop at men's section at thrift store. Lots of blazers from that too. Like the best place that you can get a blazer for a decent amount of money is men's section at a thrift store. Oh my goodness, so many great ones. I buy them like yeah i should stop buying them <laughs> but i crop them i have them as oversized i just love that anyways let's move on to the look yeah i have everything that they had a pair of loafers with a little chain on it to be a little more trendy we have that little flower to substitute the little stone that they had a scarf love it would wear it to an office any day so let's move on to max mara show and let's read once again. Oh my goodness, this is, this is horrible. Okay, it is now 70 years since a driven young entrepreneur named Achille Maramoti founded Max Mara. As current designer Ian Griffiths noted, in 1951, Maramoti had envisaged the market for his fledgling coat factory as the vibes of Italy's male professionals, and then they rose and they rose. The Max Mara rose with them. Now, they're doctors, they're lawyers, they're vice presidents of United States. Uh, to mark the parallel 70 years accent of Max Mara as a byword for excellence in women's professional power, dress and the rightful accent of its customer to assume by merit positions of professional power, Griffith imagined his runway a celebratory procession. The feel was heavily Anglo-centric. This was because Max Mara had long looked at London for source of codes. It also reflected Griffith's twin identities as a young punk kid in the British capital and more recently as a content rural gent in Suffolk. There was also a satisfying irony in the framing of the celebration of hand-worn meritocracy in the format echoing the celebration of an inheritedly unmeritocratic British institution. Whether earned through merit or privilege, there were many pieces here to delight in possessing. Griffiths said that one oversized Aaron sweater was made in 1.5 kilograms of cashmere. Country casual overwear shapes were rendered in alpaca finished to be thornproof, a function prop best not to test, and tailoring was patterned in market town Tedersel Czech, playing against the rural organza knits more Camden punk than Highland games, the skirts, sweaters, t-shirts, and headscarves patterned with various of original Max Mara graphics. There was a great emphasis on llamas. Today's digitally presented runway show might not have been aligned with jitty flag-waving crowds too soon, but a celebration of, of Max Mara's Platinum Jubilee, it was splendid nevertheless. All right, so the first outfit that I tried to recreate was this. 
it's more of kind of like, is it an olive green, a hacky green, like very dark brown green teddy coat with kind of a, a taller color blouse. We have a little sock with a loafer shoe. So I didn't have this color per se. So I decided to go for like these items, but in a different color that also matched the aesthetic of the entire show. So for mine, I had my only teddy coat, which was is very, very bright. And I call it my Vinnie the Pooh teddy coat because it's so yellow. And I had a turtleneck of kind of a mustardy yellow that fitted very well. I think it's not quite long enough, but it's okay. I have little socks and a little loafer. No heels though. Wish they were heeled. I think that would have made the outfit better and if the coat was like past my knee. But we do what we can with what we have and here we go. I think it's all right. I would probably wear it with something a little bit longer underneath it. Bermuda shorts or something like maybe jeans thing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. It's a, it's an all right outfit. I'm not going to say that I, it's my favorite or anything, but I quite like it anyways. So the next outfit that I tried to recreate was this, it's kind of like a camel color, everything. We have very monochromatic jacket with large pockets, very, I don't want to say industrial, but very, very practical. We have a sweater with kind of a little bit of a, a neck here. We have a, a belt bag and a pair of what I think are biker shorts and a little sock moment with a lace up shoes here i am not quite the same color scheme but very like natural browns and sands and such so i have a sweater with a little color i put on my utility jacket type with the pockets and i have my biker shorts that are a little longer i prefer my biker shorts to go to the knee in a in an animal print but i think it's okay i have a saddlebag that I've done twice around my waistline. Now it's a belt bag. I decided to go for my combat boots and I quite like this outfit. Honestly, would wear it any day for like a casual, maybe go to the grocery store, do a little errands here and there. It's very nice. I like it. It's the, you know, the time where you're like, but in every day, how am I going to be fashionable? Yeah, like that. Just like little notes little things here and there you can you can make your trip to the grocery store look like you came from the runways <laughs> all right let's get into the third outfit from the show and this is the inspiration behind it we have a black headscarf we have lots of headscarves very large sunglasses we have a sweater i guess the 1951 is it referring to the year of the max mara creation we once again have those biker shorts loafers with socks okay so here is what happened not quite the same but still okay so i have the sweater it's not quite long enough i would have really liked if it was much longer like covering my bum and the front side of the biker short but that's okay i was going for more like a color i have a dark sweater like that but yeah i wanted to go for the lighter one i don't know why so i don't have a black scarf i have this pattern scarf that we already seen before and a pair of sunglasses i have the little socks and little loafer moment as well and the same biker shorts yeah that's it as i mentioned would change the sweater for something more volume something more longer and maybe do like a combat boots instead but yeah it's quite okay I think the little scarf is a little too extra for like grocery shopping, but you know, if, if you haven't washed your hair in a while, it's a great, great way to hide that. Let's move on to the next look. And here is the inspiration behind it. We have a bomber jacket. We have kind of something fancy going on with the color of the shirt underneath. The color is very rich and it goes on to a wider leg pant, cropped pant. And once again, the lace up shoes. And in case you haven't noticed, I try to match my makeup as best as I can to the shows just because it like has that feeling to it, you know, like just a little extra thing, but it does make a difference. So I have almost exactly the same color. I'm excited. I have a bomber jacket and I put on underneath like my shirt that has kind of a fancier color. There's like some ruching at 
the collar and at the buttons. The wider leg pant that is cropped. Yay, finally! <laughs> I'm always suffering with the wide leg pant not being long enough for it to hit to the ground, but this time it's supposed to be like that. Yay! Anyways, have my boots, combat boots, favorite, favorite shoe for fall winter of mine. And yes, I like this outfit. It's quite simple. I don't know where to wear it because it's like a little too fancy for the grocery store, but like not fancy enough to go to work. It's like not professional enough. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Like I like it, but I don't know where to wear it. All right, next, 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 next. Let's move along. We have this as an inspiration. Fit we have kind of a a greenish brown jacket, maybe like a shearling one. We have a layered jacket underneath. We have a green skirt, green sock with a loafer type shoes. Here's what I decided to go for. Honestly, really hate this, like right off the bat. I'm not even gonna pretend like I like this outfit. <laughs> I didn't have a green skirt, so I decided to go for like a plaid version that has little green stripes in there, but it's blue. I went for like layering of my green faux leather for shearling jacket and that jacket that we've seen before just now layered uh, with the socks and the loafers i just really don't like this outfit i think it's like just the bulkiness of it the jacket underneath gives me a huge stomach that i it's just it's just not it's like too tight around the hips and it just like bubbles up around the stomach i uh, don't like it but you know i tried the next outfit let's do this i like it so we have this gray suit i believe it has a very faint plaid pattern on it we have a shirt underneath with a kind of a square like a graphic thing we have a headscarf and lace-up shoes okay was very excited about this one because i think i nailed it i thrifted this suit from the thrift store love it you've seen already the pants from it before i have a shirt with a graphic word thing on it from like a few years back when it was so popular i still quite like it it says i want to be on the naughty list <laughs> so it's a little more appropriate for like christmas headscarf i know it's not in like a brown it's not the same color per se but i like it it's gray it's fun for some reason i decided to keep the loafers and not change into the lace-up shoe or, or like a combat boot i quite like it i would wear this to work to an office maybe lose the headscarf i think it's too fancy for that but if i want to make a statement i would wear it i yeah i don't care the last the very last outfit for the video and for the max mara show here it is we have a mustardy color almost everything we have this weird hat that is kind of a flat cap but it also has ears but it also like not flat it's kind of like a baker boy hat and we have this very oversized v-neck sweater kind of is it a skirt or though is that pants not sure but in the same color and a lace-up shoes here is what I decided to go for. I have this v-neck sweater. I felt it was appropriate because it had the same colors, you guys. And the v-neck, I know is black, but you know, we need to substitute where we can. I have this very flowy, mustardy, sand colored pants, very flowy, love them. I have this straw woven hat, kind of like a baker boy one, loafers and a pair of socks. I think this one is my favorite out of this show, maybe like a tie with this, the previous one, but this one is so casual. I feel I would wear this to a market, maybe go thrifting, maybe go to like a little coffee shop in this cool part of town. Not fashion fashion, but very wearable, very everyday kind of an outfit. I love it for that. All right, you guys, this is the end. Please comment down below. Once again, the question stands, do you think I should cut these into separate maybe three videos right or have a few shows in one what do you like to watch like a longer video or a shorter video that's basically the question please if you're not already subscribe or just like or just comment down anything just anything honestly it's, the algorithm is pretty stupid if you just write a random word 
it's already a success in my book. <laughs> Once again, thank you very much for watching this to the end. Uh, maybe check out some more recreation videos. They'll be linked down below. If you're interested in the trends that are happening right now, there here is the link to, and there's links down below too. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys are having a great day. Stay classy. Bye.